Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm keeping it 73. Okay, that'll yeah. work. We're, we're not trying to get 100. 100 is too, too real for y'all. Terry, what's some advice you would give to people that are, uh, as, as far as automotive and up, up here in the winters in North Dakota? Okay, uh, up here in the winter, number one, make sure you check how good your coolant is. Do you know how to check your coolant, Jer? You don't know how to check your coolant? Like the level of it, yeah. Okay, so what happens if it gets to a certain degree outside? Do you know if the coolant in this car is gonna not freeze? No, because I That's haven't drained it and refilled it. With real coolant or did you put water in with it? 50-50. 50-50 is probably okay, but you should still check it. Yeah. Right? Well, I plan on draining it um, and, then, and then just filling it with straight antifreeze if we're gonna have the winter they're talking about. If it's about, been a while since you bought a battery, I would suggest a brand new battery before it even starts to get cold. Um, block heaters or maybe a thinner style oil for the winter time. Yeah. Okay, because the thicker stuff is harder to crank over and it will get to the point where you can't crank stuff over. And just be ready for something to fail. When the cold weather hits, something's gonna break. Your starter, um, you name it, something your your defroster. Yeah, <laughs> something's gonna break when it gets cold. That's what happens when it gets cold. So. And the thing is, you want it to break around October, November. That way, you've got time to get it fixed and get it worked on. Because January, February, unless you have to go outside, nobody's trying to do nothing. Yeah. And it is too late because it's if it's minus thirty, it's hey, it's, your your vehicle's gonna be sitting wherever it's, it was last sitting at. Yep. There you go. That's my advice. Get the maintenance done now that you need to. Make sure your coolant's good. Make sure your battery's good. Make sure your starter's good. If you've got a starter that's already been kind of acting up, oh, it can make it a little bit longer. No, no, it's gonna it's <laughs> gonna shatter in the winter time, and then you're done. So if you've got something like that, you kind of been putting off, get it fixed now. Yep. And also. Uh cold weather clothing you got any advice for people that you will never have enough cold weather clothing don't do what jerry does here and wear a garbage trash bag. bag it works it works they make fun of me terry wasn't here when i when i was oh, wearing, wearing a, bag. a garbage bag I yes saw. Yeah. i was wearing a garbage bag i couldn't help it it was that particular day we were rigging over and i thought i was prepared for the day and I mean for that night and as it went on I was like you're never prepared yeah I was like okay this 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 isn't working I gotta get something and that garbage bag saved my life okay and I'm telling you Terry I'm telling you cuz that first day we went out the location bro I was like yeah I just got I just got my hoodie on I'll be good and I walked outside and you know uh, shift change you know night shift you know it's still kind of daylight and I'm like it's kind of cold this hood, this hood is gonna get it but luckily I went back and I got one of these and I, and I took it with me and I was like okay just in case I got that um, and I got up in the man basket Terry active gear <laughs> so this kind of stuff so that you you know like the athletes and stuff like where it's form-fitting it's it's uh, moisture wicking that's what you want you want stuff that's gonna get the moisture away from your body because that's where the cold is so, active gear active gear do you wear your same um, mucks in the winter time, or you got different boots? I have this. I have different grades of boots. Like these are my these are my average cold weather boots, and I'd show you. But you know, but then I have my real cold winter boots. Come on, baffins. Baffins, absolutely. That's too much boots for me. Oh man, I'll tell you what. To keep, but you got to be moving. Like you, your feet will get cold if you're not moving. Your yeah. feet will get cold enough too. Oh, you talking about in the big ones or in the like in the, the summer baffins? Right. Summer baffins? Uh, no. <laughs> No, they the summer ones like they're they're insulated and they got like the the tie ruffle at the top like it's it, it's got the liner in it. Mine's got mine has the laces. Mine's got laces. Okay, you talking about those? I know what you talking about. Well, Ter Terry, you got any other advice for anybody that may be considering coming to North Dakota? Since how we've made it to five minutes, bro. You Make you sure your wife's okay with it. Otherwise, yes. you're going to get divorced. What's up, y'all? It's JPTV3000. I'm here with Stuart. 
Steric? Stewart. Stewart. Yeah. Okay, Stewart. Stewart. Nice to meet you, man. Appreciate you for your time, bro. Yeah. Man, what what brought you to North Dakota, man? And well, it was oil field work. Yeah. Uh, Finding a better opp opportunity, and you know, just uh, being able to better provide for my family. Yeah. You know, and uh, I don't have you had. And have you had much luck so far in the job search, or are you kind of, kind of working with the command center? You know, kind of work, kind of, pretty much explain. You know how, how how it's going so far. Well, it's actually going really good so far. Here with the command center and stuff. You know, like I, I was able to come the very first day uh, and get out to work right away. You know, and I, I haven't had any issues with anybody that I work with. Uh, you know, it's just uh, very, uh, Miss Vic here at the command center has yeah. been more than awesome, and, yeah. you know, it's just, uh, And you know what, since you said that, you bring up a real good point, and it's all about a person's attitude, you know, you know, you know, bring a good attitude with you, bring a good work ethic, you know, because, you know, because I work here out of the command center, and I have a full-time job, but I do the exact same thing, like, the same thing I do while, while I work. I bring my same work ethic here, and like you said, when it comes to the people that you work with, that really makes a big difference. Because yep. if if everybody's on the same page about coming there, doing the job, taking care of business, it makes the work go a whole lot better. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, I've I've only had like one instance where I had uh, another guy that I didn't really get along with. Yeah. Other than that, it's been real good. I I've enjoyed it. I you know, but I also. Got a little bit different work ethic than yeah. most, but I mean everybody has their own, you know. Way. And, and also, you you see how far that carries you, you know, because it's happened to me. Like like I got work out of here, and then I got another opportunity somewhere else, and then I was offered, and then I was offered another opportunity somewhere else. Man, what what's some of the the positions or jobs you see that are available for people that don't have any um, experience in all of this? Oh, you know, just. Uh, well, I, lately I've been doing uh, uh, making honey and stuff out of. Food. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Look, hey man, I did that one time. It's all right. Yeah. It's all right, but like, no, I'm not a big fan of bees and stuff. Well, like actually, like, it, it's kind of cool because like the honey bees don't actually. Yeah, yeah, because it. Uh, and when they when they put them through the smoke. Hey, I'm gonna let you explain. You explain. Uh, well, it's pretty much like they they bring in like the hives from out in the field and. Um, you know they don't really have they have a few bees in them yeah but like it's not covered yeah yeah it's not covered in bees and then in the shop there's so much noise and stuff that it confuses the bees so that they don't really bother you yeah while you're working in there you know as long as you're not sitting there playing around yeah. you know then they yeah. they'll because they open the screens for the big doors that they have and they uh you know they just pretty much leave you alone. Yeah. You know, as long as you're not trying to swat at them. Yeah, because I, let's see, was that 2015 I went and did that? I think it was about this this same time. Uh, yeah, we're in August. Because mm -hmm. uh, you go out towards two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, to uh, Fairview. Yeah, family, yeah, yeah. Uh, Fairview, and then I think his farm, you had to make a right on a dirt road, and then it was like not too far after that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's still the same guy. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? That's a good experience for people who never seen, you know, how they do that, man. You know, and it's it's it's, it's interesting to see that, cause yeah. I, I went out there, I was a guy with the scraper, you know, uh, uh, scraping the wax off oh. of the, off oh. the boxes and stuff. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's it, it's not bad, man. That's that's one thing I do miss about coming to the command center and working is the it would always be something different. Yeah. Yeah, um, every day. I've seen like you know flagger jobs. I've seen you know all these other opportunities up here come yeah. up, and it's it's been an honor to you know even be with. And, and, yeah. You know, but I'm I'm probably gonna have an opportunity to like you, you know, go somewhere else, and you know, but it's it's all on you know what you make of it up here while you're up here. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm actually traveling back home this evening, but you know. It's, uh, yeah. And that's a good thing, you know. You, you know, you have that option. Yeah. So uh, that's all I can think of. You got any advice for anybody that's thinking about coming to North Dakota? Yeah, just you know, uh, a lot of a lot of places it is, you know, be clean. Uh, you know, they uh, they require a lot of 
cleanliness that yeah. day, you know, whether it be drug use or whatever, yeah. you know. But, um, yeah, other than that, just, just trying to have fun while you're doing it, yeah. you know. And that's a big thing. If you have issues, if you have drug issues, leave them, leave them where you at, because I've, I've seen it up here. It don't work out up here. This, this just, but people gotta learn from. People gotta learn from mistakes. Man. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like it. You know, yeah. I, I learn from my mistakes every day. Yeah. <laughs> man, Stuart, man, I appreciate that. You want to say hey to anybody back home? I love. Hopefully, you'll be able to watch this. Yeah. I'm not much of an interviewer, but. <laughs> hey, man, you're doing a good job, man. All I can say, man, is thank you, man. Appreciate that. And man, you know, hopefully, you know, everybody at home or anybody that's watching this, uh, consider it. Uh, there's a command center in Williston. There's a command center in Wofford City. There's a command center in uh, Minot. I don't know if there's one in Dickinson, but Wofford City, Williston, and Minot, and they have day labor. Uh, main thing is be here in the morning time. That's when most of the job of the jobs go out. Spring, summer, and fall stuff does slow down if it rains a lot because. Most of the construction is gonna gonna pretty much get shut down if it rains too much. And uh, once we get into late October, November, a lot of the construction is gonna stop anyway. Uh, so keep that stuff in mind. Once again, it's JPTV3000. I'm here with Stewart. Thank y'all for your time, and we'll see y'all next time.